Hello and welcome to Midday Connection on April 6th, Monday, Thursday of Holy Week here at First Presbyterian Church in San Angelo. For those who don't know, my name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And today we will again uh, do one of our daily lectionary readings and talk about it and see what the Lord might have for us. Let me go ahead and open us in a word of prayer as we do have quite a bit of reading to do today. Gracious Lord, thank you so much for all that you do for us. And thank you that as we uh, have arrived at uh, Thursday of Holy Week and all of the uh, the different things that are going to go on tonight here at the service and all of the ways that we are still uh, contemplative of you, the, the way we remember uh, your death uh, on the cross. Lord, we're grateful that you continue to give us your word and that you continue to transform us. Uh, I know, Lord, as there are many things going on this week, and there's a lot of a lot of moving parts and how there's probably tiredness going around. So I pray, Lord, that we would be focused on your word and be attentive to it and uh, be transformed by it. We thank you and praise you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, today, we're going to actually do a psalm that we even read yesterday, and that's starting off today with Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our Hebrew scripture prophecy today comes from Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 through 18. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction, for the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. 
They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Cursed be the day on which I was born, the day when my mother bore me, let it not be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought the news to my father, saying, A child is born to you, a son, making him very glad. Let that man be like the cities that the Lord overthrew without pity. Let him hear a cry in the morning and an alarm at noon, because he did not kill me in the womb. So my mother would have been my grave and her womb forever great. Why did I come forth from the womb to see toil and sorrow and spend my days in shame? In the New Testament, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verses 14 through 17, and then we'll jump forward to chapter 11, um, verses 27 through 32. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from the worship of idols. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. And then over to chapter 11. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and the blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves, and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world." Our gospel text today comes from John chapter 17. Actually, it's the entire chapter of John chapter 17. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, 
that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may, may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love which with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. And back to our Psalms, we're going to be in Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. And our final psalm today is Psalm 102. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me, answer me speedily in the day when I call. For my days pass away like smoke, and my bones burn like a furnace. My heart is stricken and withered like grass. I am too wasted to eat my bread. Because of my loud groaning, my bones cling to my skin. I am like an owl of the wilderness, like a little owl of the waste places. I lie awake. I am like a lonely bird on the housetop. All day long my enemies taunt me. Those who deride me use my name for a curse. For I eat ashes like bread and mingle tears with my drink because of your indignation and anger. For you have lifted me up and thrown me aside. My days are like an evening shadow. I wither away like grass. But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. Your name endures to all generations. You will rise up and have compassion on Zion for it is time to favor it. The appointed time has come. For your servants hold its stones dear and have pity on its dust. The nations will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord will build up Zion. He will appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and will not despise their prayer. Let this be recorded for a generation to come, so that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord, that he looked down from his holy height. From heaven the Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who were doomed to die, so that the name of the Lord may be declared in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem when peoples gather together in kingdoms to worship the Lord. He has broken my strength in mid-course. He has shortened my days. O oh my God, I say, do not take me away at the midpoint of my life, you whose years endure throughout all generations. Long ago you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you endure. They will all wear out like a garment. You change them like clothing, and they pass away, but you are the same, and your years have no end. The children of your servants shall live secure. Their offspring shall be established in your presence. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Maybe it's just because it's Thursday. Maybe it's because we've been reading Jeremiah. Right. <laughs> but uh, these are these are heavier than usual. They are. I yes. How much Psalm 102 and the Jeremiah 20 really seem to kind of mirror each other mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, uh, 
once again, I think, uh, you know, from the very beginning, we, we knew this was going to happen. If you go back and look at the beginning of Jeremiah, where when God is calling Jeremiah and commissioning him to service, uh, he tells Jeremiah that people aren't going to listen. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's going to be um, really difficult. And I think sometimes it's possible for us to hear God and believe God and and even follow God. And then when it starts happening the way God said it was going to happen, that we might go, wait, wait, no, this is this is not what I expected. Um, this is a lot more difficult than I expected it to be. And uh, Jeremiah is obviously experiencing persecution as he continues to preach God's word to the people. But even in the midst of his even in the midst of his kind of lamenting kind of thing of the difficulty that's going on, uh, he has these these lines in here that I I can't keep that word of the Lord inside. Mm -hmm. Like I have to I have to preach it. Like even if I try to think, to, well, maybe not today. It would be easier if I just kept my mouth shut. It'd be but easier it if I kept is, my mouth shut. But, <laughs> right, but he just he can't. He can't. And it, it comes out, um, but when when I read, like starting there, verse verse fourteen, you know, cursed be the day on which I was born. Um, right. I mean, that's pretty. It's pretty that's strong. That's pretty language. strong I mean, language. Um, you know, let that day be not remembered well. <laughs> you know, why didn't I die in my mother's womb? Um, I don't think I've ever experienced that kind of that level that of, level of, of despair in a way, mm -hmm. or just that depth of uh, danger of um, rejection. Just you know, we've all experienced hard things, but I've never right. cursed the day I was born. Right, and that's right. That's difficult to understand because. As bad as it is, right? That's I mean that's pretty that's pretty harsh. That's pretty harsh. And so obviously he is really, really struggling. I think similar to yesterday, we talked about uh, how even the psalm that God references, going back to you know uh, Psalm one, mm -hmm. just go back to the Psalms, Jeremiah. Did you think it was going to be any different? So again, Psalm one hundred two. Uh, you know, he has broken my strength in the course. He's shortened my days. Oh God, uh, do not take me away at the midpoint of my life. You know, you endure. I'm just grass going to be withered away. So you endure. I get it. Things are going to work out. But maybe it's the children, you know, even at the end of that section, you know, the children of your servants shall live secure. Their offspring will be established. There's almost even a sense that uh, the people who are investing now might not ever see the actual reward right but because of their faithfulness then their children will mm -hmm. and and I think you know as parents you know you've, you've got your kids and I've got my kids and if you think if you think about it would we not sacrifice for the better of our own kids um, that that to me is a little bit more understandable I guess yes that I do agree right we can even if we may not see the outcome. And so, yes, like you said, with our kids, and I mean, we see that, you know, teachers, teachers may never see the impact they have, even in ministry. We may never, you know, you may have opportunities to minister to people, and you may never see the outcome of that, but yet that faithfulness, that, you know, that uh, desire to share and, and to minister, you know, to, to do that, it, it's there. And we may not see the outcome of that. But like I said, that's a little more understandable than what um, Jeremiah, you know, he's having these difficulties. And instead of saying, okay, we, I may not see the end. But man, what if just never even been here I don't know that's I that's, I'm struggling that's with some of these today I don't that's, know what to do rough. with some of these I things. like your teacher analogy I really do I think there's the uh, you know we can all think back to the good teachers in our lives um, that invested that next 
step along the way. Mm -hmm. And that, that faithful um, support and encouragement and concern, um, you know, I think back on some of my favorite teachers, especially in, in high school, that uh, were encouraging, especially when things were starting to get pretty difficult mm -hmm. and just keep moving forward. Um, so I really like that analogy, and I think that, again, I think we have to take the whole counsel of Scripture together. You know, this, you know, Jeremiah is intentionally tough, and yet he continues to be faithful. Um, and, and maybe even it's probably a good idea to throw out that reminder, you know, after Jeremiah comes his Lamentations, and in the middle of Lamentations, uh, you know, chapter 3, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And you know, we sing that song. And, and it's a great song. But gosh, remembering to sing it in context. That, um, yeah, God's faithfulness is especially evident when there's nothing else that would indicate that to be true. Right. In the midst of the most difficult right. times. So we're, we're getting a snapshot, a little picture into Jeremiah's life at a particular time, but his, even as he struggles, he knows that God is still faithful. Right. Okay. So looking then at, oh, let's go to Corinthians first. All right. And we have a couple different places. Okay, we're talking about the Lord's Supper, which makes sense because it's Monday, Thursday. Uh, Monday, Thursday, we're celebrating how Jesus takes the Passover feast and makes it about himself. Right. Uh, I, uh, Jesus basically saying, I am the Passover lamb that is to be slain. Uh, you know, he breaks the bread. My body is going to be broken. He pours out the wine. My blood is the wine. Exactly. And, and so we see in Corinthians... Um, uh, Paul obviously uh, through other the, the parts in between what you read are talking about the institution of the Lord's Supper and these kind of things but that idea of how it even started uh, what was it flee from the worship of idols and speak as sensible people um, but even that verse 16 the cup of blessing that we bless is it not sharing in the blood of Christ and the bread that we break is not sharing in the body of Christ, um, well, what does that mean? If you want to participate in the Lord's Supper, his body was broken, yes, but what does that mean for us? We are entering into that same kind of work. His blood was shed. We are entering into that kind of work. Um, obviously, on the eternal scale of things, he accomplished through his death that which we could not do for ourselves but in the idea that we are to be transformed into the life into into the image of jesus why would it not mean participation in the same kind of work that he's doing right and as we as we break bread together and as we take the cup and we'll do that here in just a couple hours um it gives us, it, it gives us that community. We are, you know, it tells us that we all partake of the one bread. We are one body. We are all in Christ when we do that, and that that binds us together um, in that work and in that um, in that mission that He gives us. We are bound together in sharing that that meal together. The uh, the idea that if we take the Lord's Supper in, in kind of an unworthy manner. You know, what is that? Verse 29 of chapter 11. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. Um, again, especially when we go back to John and look at Jesus' prayer for unity and things, if people believe that the Lord's Supper is just for them alone, like this is Jesus forgiving me of my sins, which which it is, right? But if but they, but it's more, more than that. Yeah. It's it's meant to be a unifying, uh, a unifying sacrament. It's it's meant to be something that reminds us of the body of Christ, 
And, and it is important to remember that Jesus does forgive all of us individually of our sins. That yes, that is true, but but more he is he is forgiving us into his body, into a unified group of people that will not only worship him, but then act accordingly in the world to try to unite other people to the body of Christ as well. Right. Right. Hmm. It's deep stuff today. It's really. It's really deep stuff today. Uh, yeah, so, you know, go back and read that First Corinthians. That Read that whole letter. Read that whole, uh, uh, Paul's whole purpose in writing this letter is that the divisions that take place in the church would be overcome by these reminders of sacraments. You know, remember what Jesus did. Remember uh, his teachings. And I think... I, I'm very sure that uh, that Paul had in mind a lot of what Jesus himself is praying there in in John chapter 17. Uh, I'm reflecting again on even what I'm going to preach about tonight for this Monday Thursday service. We've got a lot. We've been in John for a long time, mm -hmm. but really starting in chapter 12 is Jesus' final week on Earth and. Almost the entire rest of the book of John, um, all of the, uh, what, mm, I'm trying to do the math real quick, eight chapters left kind of okay. thing, are, are mostly about that final week right. that John is saying something really important is happening here, pay attention to it. He expands on the, uh, the conversations that go on between Jesus and his disciples and, and this John 17 uh, it's frequently called you know, the high priestly prayer where Jesus intercedes on behalf, not just for his disciples, but intercedes on behalf of the church and then the future church that will come. Um, and and that's, that's amazing that Jesus was not just thinking of what he was going to be dealing with. He was thinking of all of the people that were going to come to life through faith in him as he was going into this into this horrible event of betrayal and crucifixion and death. Just looking at this. Yeah, it's yeah. When you when we get large chunks like this, I think maybe yeah. sometimes we just have to leave them leave them as the large chunks, and uh, we can we can go into a little bit more detail. But at the same time. Um, that whole idea that if the disciples are in Jesus and Jesus is in the disciples and then Jesus is praying about that we would be one with him just as he is one with the Father. Um, and that we're connected to the Father because we're connected to him and it's just this... Right. But it's it's this invitation. It is. It is. And, and that goes speaks to the, the unity that we're talking about in in partaking in the Lord's Supper right. and and that's you know trying to figure out you know we always try to figure out you know what's the theme I don't know how that Jeremiah fits in there like a, yeah I, <laughs> I don't know what to do with that but the unity the unity that we have right um, that's that, like you said that's exactly what he's praying for and that's what we you know that's what occurs as well in the Lord's Supper, but it's... Well, look at verse 14 of... Uh, we'll start at 13. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. And you go, great, let's just stop at verse 13. Right. Jesus' joy made complete. Yep, that sounds like what I want. Right. Then verse 14, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. And I don't know if you can really have one without the other. If you want the joy of Jesus, which, you know, why wouldn't you want the joy of Jesus? It's forgiveness. It's new life. It's eternal life. It's, it's resurrected life. Mm -hmm. It is all of the things that we claim to want. Um, and then the consequence is the world of people who do not believe right. is not going to want that message and and respond negatively towards God's people 
And so I think in this way, what we have, well, let's, let's, let's link it to Jeremiah. I think what we have in Jeremiah is a, again, uh, how God is over all of human history from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah was called, wooed by God, compelled by God to be um, essentially in the presence of God and to listen attentively and then to speak that word. He can't not speak that word. It would right. burn within him. He is so he is so close to God's word that he has to share it. But I think what we're seeing is basically verse 14. You know, 1714 has taken place in Jeremiah's life. Mm -hmm. And so uh, so in this sense that Jesus has always existed, Jesus and the Father have always been uh, one in heaven uh, and is calling people to be with him in that ministry, in that relationship, in that love of, uh, love of relationship. And Jeremiah maybe got a foretaste of that. Right. Yeah. Going forward, they, you know, I... Let's see, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them. They do not belong in the world just as I do not belong in the world. You know, this this is not our final this is not our final destination, just as right. it wasn't Christ's final destination. So like you said, maybe that's the, the link to Jeremiah there. He's he's living in the world in a people that are evil, speaking truth. And we'll be saying, you know, I've sent them into the world for their sakes. I sanctify myself so that they may also be sanctified in truth. He's speaking truth. Mm -hmm. um, so in that moment, it's very difficult. But that moment isn't the destination. And even right. him speaking that truth is not the destination. There is beyond that. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's... Yeah. Like who was a good disciple? Jeremiah was a good disciple. He understood it before these particular disciples did. Right. He understood it before we do. And we have it recorded in our scriptures so we can learn about it. We can be prepared for it. We can uh, even, even expect it. Um, so, yeah, a tough word today. Yeah. But how do we recognize the body of Christ? Uh, how do we support one another as as the world would bring its uh, persecutions? How can churches see other churches in town not as competitors, but as cooperative in ministry, unified in mission? Rather than divisive, rather, rather than tearing down, rather than tearing building down, one another up. build one another up, support one another, pastors encouraging one another, praying for one another, recognizing that we all have these struggles and challenges, be less worried about, uh, you know, funds in our own pews and dollars in our own plates and be more along the line of let's tell the truth and tell the truth together right. and trust that God is the one who's going to work that out. Uh, there's enough world tearing good pastors down. Um, we don't need to do it from within. We don't need to be doing it from within. We need right. to remember that high priestly prayer. We're supposed to be one, unified in in the body. And as we take communion, it is Monday, Thursday, tonight. There's going to be lots of churches around town taking communion, um, not just in San Angelo, but around the world. Christians will right. be celebrating uh, Jesus command and ultimately what was that command love one another as I have loved you and Jesus loved us by laying his life down for us and if we can't figure out how to do that then I wonder if we've really figured out what Jesus has done for us that that love is what unifies us and what um, I think that we strive for in in that loving one another we can't be unified. So. You want to go ahead and close us in prayer? I'd be happy to. Great. Thank you. Gracious and loving Father, thank you for these words to us today, even though they are deep and they are heavy and they may be challenging. Um, thank you that you give us these words and that you give us your son that does speak for and intercede and pray for 
um, each of us that we may be invited into relationship with him and in knowing him that we can know you and in it being loved by him we can learn to love better and love him love you love the world and I pray that as we continue through this season that we look around and we look at ways to love people to love them to invite them to build them up in Jesus name we pray amen Well, thanks, everybody. I know this is going to get posted um, shortly, but uh, probably not too much sooner before our midweek, I mean, our uh, Monday, Thursday service tonight, uh, which is at 530 in the sanctuary. Uh, We do have a Good Friday service also at 530 tomorrow, Friday. And then uh, on Easter Sunday, a sunrise service at 630 at the Lake Lodge and then 1030 singular combined service in the sanctuary. So uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, do call the church and we'd be happy to listen to you and say prayers with you. Blessings to you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.